today's our first launch and what I would make a point of saying is that um, it will remain a work in progress, that the main um, issues for us here is that it is interactive, it does, does give people, including journalists and politicians and obviously the public, an opportunity to look at the crime statistics within their own area and on a state basis, on a rolling month by month basis. Um, part of the reasons for this obviously is um, for, we've had a 40% reduction in crime over the last decade, we had 5.6% reduction last year. But there always remains a perception and a feeling of um, a fear of crime within the community. And part of our job as police is actually not only just to, well, not only to reduce the crime statistics themselves, less victims of crime, but also to reassure the community that they are in a safe community in Adelaide, in South Australia. So with these crime statistics, we'll give people an opportunity to look at the state figures, and we'll also give people an opportunity to look at their local service area and see the statistics within those local service areas. And within those statistics, I find that there's an area for comment uh, with some context around it, provided by the local service area commander. So um, we, we believe that um, this offers um, you know, the public of South Australia something additional in terms of policing, an understanding of what we're doing uh, and an understanding of the crime statistics that are generally spoken about media and politicians, but without a real um, understanding by the public on, on... And at times I think crime statistics can be um, mired in politics rather than being realistically accepted for what they are. And I think South Australia, there was a recent um, um, for Adelaide in terms of cities being the safest city in Australia. And I think these statistics actually show how safe South Australia is. But at the same time, it does show that South Australia police need to really work hard to make sure that there are less victims of crime and that people can be reassured that they are in a safe state and in a safe city, city in Adelaide. What kind of stats will people have access to? So someone living in a particular suburb can log on and find out more about their neighbourhood? Um, what th they can log in in terms of their uh, suburb or their postcode and it will take them to the local service area for, for which where they're living. We're not going right down at this time to the um, particular um, suburb itself or the street or anything like that. It is the local service area because that local service area, that commander, has responsibility for the crime within that area. So what kind of stats are we talking about? Um, we can give you a demonstration of those in a second, but they're, they're all the stats that are reported on um, um, Australia-wide through all the various jurisdictions and through the national, national reporting rules. So they'll range from all your crimes against the person, crimes against property, and a whole range of other categories that, that fit into it. So you have motor vehicle crime within there, serious assaults, assaults against police, uh, ranging down to things like uh, deception, arson, etc. Where do you put the drop down to? Um, I, look, I think in early 2000, SAPOL, we restructured into local service areas. Um, and I'm, you know, I would look at it from a, obviously a police perspective because there's a whole range of other things that come into crime statistics. But we, we um, worked in local service areas. We put accountability on the commanders of the local service areas. And we put a whole range of new strategies into place, including intelligence-led policing, problem-solving policing, those type of things and what we found is that tactics within those strategies have um, really targeted recidivist offenders and what we call hotspot areas where there, there are crime in certain areas. So you'll find that we'll have bail curfews and we'll check that they are on um, obeying the curfew rules etc. And um, there has been a big emphasis from the senior executive group in the South Australia Police to make sure that people are held accountable for the crime within their area, our own police. So we move our resources where they're needed. So from a police perspective, I think it's a lot smarter policing over the last decade and um, a lot of accountability um, to, in terms of the commanders and the, the officers' efforts within their areas. Do you think this would put any pressure on the heads of LSAs to, I guess, present figures that look palatable or any more palatable? What kind of um, auditing or, you know, are these statistics the statistics that you're being told as well? Now these statistics are genuine statistics. Um, all the reports are according to national counting rules. Um, the LSA, when you talk about pressure on the LSA commanders, I don't think there'll be any additional pressure because we conduct, um, and we have been conducting for the last decade, a performance outcome reviews, which are like the New York Comstats, where we um, speak to LSA commanders on a regular basis and talk about the crime in the area and what they're doing to address the crime. So the, the statistics will be genuine, there will be no manipulation, they will fit in with all the uh, national counting rules, 
and, um, and we ensure that the LSAs um, uh, manage their statistics because we have a central area of business information section that monitor all the statistics as well. You mentioned before that there are hotspot areas where maybe crime's higher. Are there any areas that um, actually don't reflect the, the downward trend where, where the crime is actually? Well, I haven't got that detail here, but if you if we run through the statistics and you'll have access to them, you'll see that broadly across the state there's been a downward trend. Certain LSAs at periods of time will have an increase, and um, we've seen it over the last decade or so, 12 years, where LS local service areas may have some significant decreases over two or three years, and then on the fourth year or fifth year they'll, they'll spike again. But when you look at it overall, it's an overall trend downwards. How, yeah, current, how current the data, you say it's updated every month, so is this batch being released now yeah. December's data? Or? Yeah, it will be one month behind, that's right. So if we release in January, we December's data, and you'll have 12 months of data, rolling data, so you'll be able to compare all the way through, and on a year-by-year -year basis as well. So. So you can compare December 2012 with December 2013 or 2011. We've seen a lot of cases uh, in you know, bikey incidents and, um, and stabbings where the victims or witnesses have been reluctant to come forward. How much of that do you think reflects in this in terms of the victims not reporting the crime? Um, look, we, we can only go on what is reported crime and, and that's been the, the case since policing started in South Australia. You can only ever deal with reported crime, and that's the statistics we provide here. But generally, if you're referring to bikies, um, whilst some of the victims have been reluctant to provide police information, the report's still been taken because of the nature of the injuries, etc. So, I, look, I, I think these are very accurate, um, and as I said, they're based on what people report to us. And I, and I do accept that some people don't report crime but that's happened all the time, so we can only compare on what we have. So is that included in these stats, when it's not the direct victim, but someone has reported it? Yes, we, we include those in the statistics. Do you see any value in expanding this into the future to perhaps um, break down by suburb by suburb? Do you think that there is any value in that? Well, um, one, of, one of the things we're doing over this 12 months is to improve our South Australia Police Internet site, um, because we want it to have more function, functionality. And one of the areas that we'll look at is how we can continue to improve our crime statistics and have that interaction with the public, media and, and politicians. Um, I'm not sure that we'll go down to individual suburbs. I think you can actually um, uh, tar tarnish some suburbs' reputations because there may be a spike over a certain period. But as I said, our, our statistics are based around a local service area because that's where the accountability rests with the commander. Do you think the public will be quite interested in having a look at these stats or do you think it will be more useful for media and politicians? Well I think media and politicians will, will definitely use it and, and obviously you'll be able to get statistics and you'll be able to um, uh, provide us with questions about those statistics. But I think generally the public are, are pretty interested and um, what we can provide are the statistics without any, uh, anything around the edges of them from a political side of things or how media may want to report it. So. So I think um, from what we found, there's a lot of interest in policing in South Australia and uh, you can see the growth on our, our Facebook sites and our news page, etc. that uh, there are a lot of people interested in policing and I'm sure that there'll be a lot of people interested in, in the statistics and we'll probably be uh, writing letters to us to find out some more detail about it. Do other states have a similar system where the public can view? Uh, yes, they do. Were there any surprises for you in the statistics? No, no. Um, I think um, if, if you look at it, we, we, we follow up statistics, or I have um, as a member of the senior executive group now for 14 or 15 years, so you're monitoring the statistics um, while you're getting them on a monthly basis and, a, and an annual basis, and generally that's how we look at it. Um, local service area commanders and assistant commissioners in charge of areas are looking at these statistics on a daily and weekly basis. So you pick up the spikes and when you see a spike in a certain area or with a certain offence then police resources are thrown in to try, to try and reduce that, that um, uh, spike. Have there been any um, declines or increases in particular types of crimes? Um, there's been decreases in the majority of crimes and um, particularly around um, house breakings, serious criminal trespasses for instance, motor vehicle crime, there's significant drops in those as well. And then there's been drops even in, in assaults and that. But like I said, you get 
periods of time when they, they will increase. But overall, and I, you know, I haven't got all the figures before me, um, some of these drops over the last decade have been around about the 40 to 50 per cent, so they've been quite large drops. Have, have there been any um, crimes that haven't dropped despite this general drop? I, got, I haven't got any on top of my head at the moment. Um, but, um, you know, the general is that crimes have dropped right across the state and, and across most, well, the vast majority of the categories. And that's the message, is it, that you want to get out to people? Do you think people unrealistically think that their neighbourhoods are unsafe? Well, look, I think um, people can be, uh, the perceptions of crime are real, you know, and, and look, I, I don't uh, deny that if you get a certain type of crime that gets major media coverage, and we'll, we'll provide a lot of that coverage as well because we'll be looking for the offenders, and, and some of these crimes really do shock us, um, that can drive a fear of crime because everyone is either living in, or owns their own home or renting, so anyone can get a feeling that they may be the victim of a home invasion, but it's not the case. In fact, home invasions are down 40% over the last decade. It, when I say home invasion, serious criminal trespass. So fear of crime is an important thing to deal with. And, and what we want people to understand is that they live in a very safe state. And if they're living in Adelaide, they're living in a very safe capital city. So um, we'd rather see people kind of happy walking around rather than worried about crime. So, and do you think politicians have played a role in heightening that fear? Oh, look, I, look, I think there's a lot of things. I think mean, at times police can heighten the fear by some of the um, messages that we try to get out to make people safe. But equally, um, politics will always come into it. There's always an opposition and there's always a government. Is there any risk that um, people might not want to live or associate with an LSA that's got the worst crime rates? Or do you think by making an LSA as opposed to suburbs? Well, that, that's part of the reasons that we don't like to go down into the suburb because it might, you know, affect property values, for instance. Whereas the local service area, um, it's far more um, broad, it's a bigger area to deal with. And as I said, it, it gives a good understanding of crime. And you'll see there's context statements within uh, the crime stats because, you know, everyone looks at statistics and... Uh, and you can read them anyway, but you'll find that local service area commanders are putting context statements in, so it will give some idea of where, what the crime is and what the causes are. Is there a perception then of, um, of not telling people about their particular suburb? Why not? If you're saying there's no manipulation of the stats, these are the stats, you want people to know what's happening, why not tell them what's happening in their particular suburb? Yeah, well, we haven't got that far, and there's something we're going to work through, because there are you know, pros and cons of providing that. Um, like I said, it could affect property damages, so what we're telling some people about, because they've got the right to know, as you're saying, about the, that maybe we're going too low, maybe it will have a, a deeper impact on some people, particularly, I mean, how far do you take it? Do you take it down the street, which identifies certain locations? So there's, there are things we want to um, think through. We haven't ruled them out completely, but I think we've got to take everything into consideration.